All right, guys, welcome to Steamcom 2017. It's a pretty good start. Uh, so, my name is Rich Loxton. This is Matt Hart. We're the co founders of Steve Forge, if you didn't know. Hello, everyone. Uh, he's on his phone. Um, so we're going to take you through this keynote. There is a ton of stuff in this keynote, and my, my partner here will take you through the whole lot, basically. So we're going to go through and see some of the goodies that are coming up in 2018 and beyond. So I'll hand over now to Matt, and he'll take you through. Hey, guys. Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. I, uh, thank you very much for coming. No, I was going to start with a really bad joke, but I, I thought that that might kill the mood. So... I'm going to talk to you about an awful lot of things. First thing I want to talk to you about is Guild Ball. Uh, Guild Ball is probably one of the key reasons why all of you are here this weekend. Thank you ever so much for coming. Uh, yeah, woo! SteamCon is bigger than it was last year. The venue, better. The food, not so much. But um, <laughs> we'll gloss over the food. But certainly the amount of games that we're seeing people play. I was blown away this morning. I got up. Around about half eight, I had a bit of a lie in. I thought, I know, I'll saunter down to the casual play. There'll be a load of people milling around, probably looking for games, and I'll be able to pick a game up. And I walked into the room, and there must have been 50, 60 games already going. There was not a spare man to, to be played. Absolutely brilliant just to see that many people playing. And it's something that we see reflected uh, in, the, in the stats. So we track the stats. We have a look and see what happens on Facebook. We have a look and see what happens on our forums. And as you can see up here, we've actually seen a steady state of growth for Guild Ball over the last uh, year since I spoke to you. Um, huge influx of new players. We've seen some old players rotate out. Some we're sad to see not play the game anymore. Others less so. Ooh. Who is he talking about? Who is he talking about? But... Huge influx of new players, loads of new people coming into the hobby. And what really makes me happy is when I see people such as yourselves, old hats of the game, actually welcoming these people in, helping them out, new players asking questions. And you see it on the forums and you see it on Facebook. So you should give yourselves a round of applause for being one of the best communities I've ever seen. So some of you, hands up who's picked up a blacksmith's team. Pre-release, good job, good job. Those guys are not out retail until next year. It's one of our very earliest releases next year. Um, as you can see, we've got a new painter painting for us. Some of you may have heard of him. I'm so excited because... <laughs> Angel is one of my favorite painters on the planet. So when I bumped into him at Gen Con this year, uh, and he actually came and said, I'd really love to paint your miniatures. I'm like, dude, absolutely. Not a problem. And it tells me that we're actually doing the right thing. So Russ and the, and the brilliant sculpting team, Doug and the brilliant art team are actually creating visuals that world-class painters want to get hold of these models. So it really is a good affirmation of the quality of what we're putting into our development process and, and our output. And I'm, I couldn't be more proud of the quality of the plastic that we've actually delivered. Hands up, who's genuinely surprised by how good they are? Right? I, did, I stood here metaphorically last year and told you that the plastic was the best plastic I've ever seen. Do you all believe me? No. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> right, let's move on. So we want to support local game stores, and the way that we do that is try and push the boundary, try and be innovative. And what we saw a couple of weeks ago is the alternative sculpt for Millstone, that we encourage players, you guys, to go and speak to your local game stores and tell them that you wanted this model. And they had to then go and talk to their distributors, who then had to come and talk to us. And that's, that's the business model. So we sell to distributors who sell to retailers who sell to you guys, okay? But what's important to us is making sure that you guys are going into stores and supporting your local game stores. Um, and if we can do something that pushes the needle on that, that really helps make sure that you're actually going to bricks and mortar stores and supporting those local businessmen and playing games in there, then that's something we're going to continue to do. So 
the very next exclusive model that will be only available through your LGS in the same format will be the alt pose bolt. So, so me and a couple of friends, about 80 of us, um, earlier, no word of a lie, there was about 80 people in the room, right? Um, sat down, and out of all the models that we could have talked about, we picked Honor um, to be a model we're going to develop as a, as a team at SteamCon, like we did last year. And next year's uh, SteamCon 2018 model will be Honor playing for the farmers. Roll. Role to be decided by the development team. Hey. She will come with a dog, apparently. Yay. Probably be a border collie. Maybe have one ear just folded over. <laughs> Looking quizzical. <laughs> we also like to run community events. We love engaging with you guys, and it's not just a business mechanism of engaging with the community. It's actually because we're gamers and we like hanging out with you a lot and talking to you about stuff that we enjoy talking to you about. And one of the things that we have been doing is the Union Chains campaign. I hope all of you, hands up, who's posted a result for the Union Chains? Good job, guys. I've got results. Who wants to hear them? Yeah. Sorry? 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 Yeah. Who wants to hear them? Yeah. All right. So, Butchers players, be proud of yourselves. You were behind going into this weekend. So what you've done here has changed the result. Who wants to hear the results of Brewers Masons? Good job, guys. Hey. Alchemist engineers, can I ever hear a shout for the alchemists? And a shout for the engineers. So, three new veteran models for those guilds. There was another thing that happened, obulus. Ooh, Obulus. Obulus cheated, but he's got a reason for cheating. The reason for cheating is he is worried about what the church are doing. The church have come in and, and basically they're trying to dissolve the power of the union because they know that that's going to undermine the power of the guilds and that's going to create a power vacuum that they can move into and start controlling the game that we all love. Okay? And Obulus has come up with a way of stopping the church a way of defying the church. He's found a loophole that he can actually work with. And the other guilds will start to follow. So what I'm pleased to tell you is that we are going to introduce the concept of the minor guilds. The minor guilds will ally themselves with a major guild. All the existing guilds that you guys play are considered a major guild. We will be releasing minor guilds throughout the course of next year, starting with the Rat Catchers. The minor guilds are from the lower leagues of Guild Ball. What's exciting about them is two players from the miners guild will be allowed to play with the, with the major guild. So every single team is going to get two new players. And two players from the major guild will be allowed to play with the minor guild, which means that the minor guilds will have a roster of eight models. Two new rat catchers models. Scourge, the big friendly looking guy, and Pelage, the saucy lady with the rats running all over her. So let's talk about the rat catchers in some detail because that's going to be the first one to come out. So what the minor guilds gives us is a real opportunity to explore um, a lot of uh, very focused uh, game um, mechanics and game ideas that we have for actual play styles. 
And one of the things that we wanted to do with the rat catchers um, is really focus on this uh, concept of dilemma. Uh, dilemma is something where the results are actually dependent on the opponent making the decision. So it may well be that I fire an effect on you, and you have to decide whether I get to move to you, or you, maybe you get to move to me. So you don't quite know, as a rat catcher player, what your opponent's going to do. You can try and project a little bit of force, and it creates this really unknown chaos moment, uh, and we call it the dilemma control mechanic. We also have, thanks to the guys who were part of the rat catcher's uh, discussions last year, the disease mechanic. Brand new condition. Where's Andrew? Yes. <laughs> I did tell you. So yeah, um, you will need to get some more dice off of Andrew for the conditions. So the way the disease condition does is it allows the rat catchers uh, to really have um, an impact on the momentum game. So they are actually really um, controlling the generation and the expenditure of momentum. Um, they're a real control faction in that regard. So, but couple that with a dilemma, it gives you that kind of play and counterplay that we look for in our guilds. So, in other words, in other, <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll have questions about the rat catchers at the end. So, rules previews. Okay, so we have shown you two key rule previews uh, this year. Uh, we've been blown away by the level of involvement. The amount of traffic that is generated on the Facebook and on the forums is fantastic. We are 100% going to do this again because the feedback we've got has been invaluable and has really informed the decision making that we are making about our game, all of our game. We have also moved into a new uh, premises here in Manchester. It's three or four minutes down the road. Uh, we're actually equipped to run events. We've dedicated some space. Uh, within the area, we we're able to run up to a 128-man event, but we are also going to start running what we're going to call, what were you going to call it? Something cool. <laughs> but it's going to be basically under NDA, playing unreleased stuff, come in, be part of the playtest team, actually within HQ, working directly with the developers, getting to see and getting to be a part of the whole development process. Where's Ed? Uh, not the other Ed. I told you. So, organized play for next year. We've had a really serious think about organized play. One of the things I do want to stress is we have had a close look at the supply chain and the way that these packs are getting out to you. And quite frankly, what happened in 2017 is not good enough. No one is happy with, with the limited supply of these kits. So we are making sure that going into 2018 that those problems are going to be reduced to the point of eradication, and you guys are going to be able to get the kits in the right hands, not the people who gouge them on eBay. We're going to... You guys, I mean, this is probably the worst kept secret in the world, but you've been our open beta testers for the Rookie League system. No. no. <laughs> Who knew? Oh! This is something we're super excited about. It's, uh, it's an extension of the big league that came out in season two. It's a legacy style campaign system. It's going to enable you to take a rookie, play with your buddies, set up a league, and grow your rookie through the course of 10, 12, 15 games. Yeah. Uh, we're going to supply that with, with a kit that's going to come with stickers and all the paraphernalia you need. And what we are going to do, and as you can see by uh, the really early uh, sculpt of Rookie Mash, is uh, we're also going to release rookie versions, uh, rookie models of, of those. <laughs> Hold on, I need to go back. So the Rookie League is designed for new and experienced players. And it's really important that this organized play approaches a full spectrum of players. So both new and experienced players should get a, a kick out of this. For the new players coming into the game, though, we're building um, a kickabout league pack. Um, it's very similar to what we have at the moment. We're going to improve it. But this is designed for players to come in, maybe paint a captain and a couple of models, play a game, add a, add a mascot, add a couple more models. And then over the course of four or five play sessions, you've actually escalated from three models all the way up to six models. And it should be a way of preparing you as a player to kind of get used to the way that that team works in a way that you know, you're not getting ruffle stomped by the experienced guy down at the shop. Okay. 
Launch packs, we're going to carry on doing those. We've had a lot of fun with those. We're going to keep pushing the boundaries, treat, keep trying to come up with super exciting ways of doing those. So every key event will have um, a launch pack that goes with it. So there will be a reason to go to the store, go to your club, and play an event to celebrate You know, Blacksmiths 2 coming out. And we're also going to do community event packs. Um, I'm not going to talk more about that at this moment, but Union Chains in this, year, this year was so fun. We actually want to make sure that next year's community event is actually supported by, by a league pack that has cool swag in it and, and support mechanisms. Competitive play. Ooh. So competitive play is really good, really healthy. The, the standard of play is super high. Um, we're going to uh, update uh, the rules pack for 2018. Um, that's going to come out early of next year, and it's going to take effect at Adepticon. So we're going to give it to you in time for you to actually prepare uh, for Adepticon or your local events. Um, it's going to include brand new style plot cards. The brand new style plot cards enable a brand new initiative mechanic. Mm. We have a restructured game setup stroke order. So when the kickoff tosses and when the captain choices, that's going to be uh, restructured. Yeah. <laughs> Updated roster sizes. One of the things that we're going to do is make sure that each minor guild is competitive at launch. And this is incredibly important that you're able to grab the minor guild and not feel like you are below the competitive curve. All the, comp all the minor guilds are developed with the mind of them being competitive at competitive play. So you can buy those with confidence and play those with confidence um, during the 2018 competitive play scene. Part of the Obulus' plan, though, going back to Obulus. God bless him. And the church, curse the church. Okay, is at the general release of the minor guild, the associated major guild is no longer able to take union players in competitive play. He's a good-looking fella, isn't he? <laughs> so we talked about the size of the community growing. Um, we've also seen hundreds of Guildball events all around the world. Um, small eight-man scrambles all the way up to 100-plus events run by Jay, Vengeance, and WTC. And we're absolutely going to continue to support those as best we possibly can. Um, we firmly believe in the community side of things and the competitive scene, and we just like coming along to them. And it's very often you'll find someone from the dev team or just anyone from Steamforge appearing at an event and just playing, playing in an event, hoping to win. I never win. <laughs> One day. Can you guess what they're made out of? So, one of the things that we want to do is we want to work with you guys. This is a newly sculpted fisherman team, all 12 models. We have updated the sculpts to ensure that some of the lessons we learned from the season one sculpting has been corrected. Um, there's, they have a lot more surface area for you to paint, a lot less fiddly detail. Um, the poses have been improved. Uh, we've obviously got the gold models and the terrain and the new style puffer fish ball. We've even got salt in there. <laughs> but, uh, but, hold on, guys. The issue that we have with PVC is it has an upfront cost. And that's something that we want to work with you guys to understand, is there a demand for something like this before we launch into investing a huge amount of cash into the molds and everything like that? So we, we are going to reach out to you, and we're going to be absolutely transparent, as we always are. <laughs> I feel like a stripper now. <laughs> Oh, it's a real one. <laughs> so we're going to put this out for a vo basically a vote. Like how many, we, we did a little poll to see which teams you guys like the idea of moving into PVC. 
Um, we would love to move every team into PVC. It would be absolutely amazing if the full range looked as good as the farmers and the blacksmiths do, sitting in their boxes on the shelves. Um, so expect more details in that in the next couple of weeks. So that will be out going through all the social media and we'll be looking to interact with all of you guys. And if enough of you are interested, then absolutely, we're going to press the go button and go nuts on it. So um, we will put high-res images up so you can really zoom in and check out the new sculpts. But I'm super happy with the way the sculpts is. Slightly disappointed Grayscales is not doing a weird dance anymore, but, you know, your mileage may vary. So I'm going to... Finally, right? <laughs> I'm going to hand back to Rich. He can talk to you about some merchandise and some of our partners who are working with us. So because Matt doesn't like chibis, that's basically it. Um, so we've got plenty of merchandise opportunities coming up. Um, we've had a lot of work with our licensed partners, things like that. So you can see here we've got the new Season 2 chibis. We're going to be launching them hopefully around Gen Con time, so they're going to be appearing uh, the t-shirt range is going to be in the next few weeks. We're going to do a full t-shirt range with the logo. It's something that you guys have requested for a, a long time. And we've finally got the systems in place to be able to do it. So we're just making sure the quality is right. We did try and get a SteamCon t-shirt. We're a little bit late on it. Uh, but we will definitely get this range up to have a look at. So, our license partners, we've... Worked a lot over the last year to get Guild Ball uh, and its IP pretty much everywhere. It's trying to you know, really kind of ramp this up. You see there, we've got some fantastic links in the Broken Toe bus, which are amazing. You might have seen the Angel Assault one this weekend, which is awesome. Uh, DTR, Frozen Forge, you know, the list goes on. We've got a really good core that we're already working with our products out there. We also are bringing uh, several other cool new products. And some of those, you know, if you work out what they kind of do, you might have an idea of what's going to come up. So... Guild Ball is alive and kicking, and we're definitely going to be supporting that with a range of products for you guys to you know, assist you know, get into the game. Okay, so there's other part of Steamforge. What we've been doing as well is trying to look at what we've created over the last kind of 18 months. And we've gone from you know, me and Matt working on Skype in our bedrooms to 1 a.m. to having quite a, you know, quite a system, you know, a global system of distribution, of kind of companies within the companies, and Printmaker we launched recently was, you know, that's our 3D printing service we've had for the last year. We're now offering that out to, you know, outsourcing it, basically. Um, Steamforge SFG Innovations is a new kind of branch what we want to create, and it's going to be a publishing arm for Steamforge games. So we're going to be publishing other games along with internal games that kind of, we get a lot of ideas in the dev team, and some of those are fantastic, but they're not going to fit our main kind of core brands. So SFG Innovations allows us to bring those to market. Uh, SFG Player is the other part as well. That is our basically our affiliate program. So we're going to talk a bit more about that probably next week. You're going to see a bit of it coming out. But anyone who's been on the store and been getting the Dark Harvest and some of our exclusives, they're going to get rewarded for that activity as well. A different side, this one. So, Ghost Patrol is one of the internal ones we've been looking at. So, again, it's a, through the SFG Innovations. This is going to be one of our first products we launch through that, okay? It's a really kind of quirky little card game. Um, it's, you know, so if you think of Shadow Games, things like that, it's going to be a small box kind of product. So, it's super, super cool artwork as well. Very different to what we're used to. So, you, again, kind of out of our comfort zone. Licenses, um, you know, we're not slowing down on this. Um, We've had massive growth, as I've said before. We've learned a lot of lessons. I'm not going to stand here and say we've done everything perfectly. We haven't. You know, we've learned as we've kind of progressed with these licenses. Resident Evil is a fantastic success. Dark Souls has been a fantastic success. And we've got a ton more, okay, coming. And they're going to keep coming. And we're going to make sure that our dev teams, you know, we are fully equipped to handle all the kind of things we're doing. So I just want to make that really clear is that the opportunities we've been given, we've really kind of ramped ourselves up to, to handle this, okay? And there's some wicked, wicked projects that I cannot talk about right now, but they're going to be coming down the pipelines, okay? So make sure you have a look from 2018 onwards. Now, stop there, Matt. I'm going to pass back to Matt. This is... <laughs> this is something that me and Matt have been working on for probably two years, and it's a baby that... <laughs> A baby that we've been nurturing for a long, long time, and uh, we're quite pleased. I'll hand over to my very good friend to introduce the product. That's it. Is there any questions? <laughs> <laughs> so some of you may remember this artwork from last year. 
So I'm very, very pleased to introduce you to a game that we're calling God Tier. We're going to be focusing on the legacy style content. We're going to be focusing on a miniature game that grows as you play it. The more God Tiers that you acquire, your warband gets larger and larger and more and more powerful. So think all of those wonderful games from our, our youth, like Mordheim and Necromunda and Realm of Chaos and all those kinds of games. All of that rolled into a really modern, fresh rule set, um, utilizing an awful lot of the engine mechanics that we have from Guild Ball. So you've got the cleanliness of that rule system, but set in a classic fantasy world with the legacy gameplay. It's narrative driven. So you will be playing in campaigns that, that affect the narrative of the world. You'll be competing with each other for the god tiers that appear as you play through it. We're going to continue with the pre-assembled PVC mini. So this is literally by, by the champion, by the models, pull them out on the table and start playing with them straight away. We've built in and cultivated a massive amount of list building potential into this game. The number of axes that you're going to need to think about when you're constructing your warbands is, is just mind-blowing. It's a faction-free system. So it means that every champion that gets released is eligible to fit into your warband if you believe that it would strengthen your warband and your play style. It's a fast setup and play. I've shown it to a few people this weekend secretly. Um, and it is a game that is done in 60 minutes or less. So you can get down the club, you can blast through two, three, four games, collect all of those god tiers, power your warband up and be ready for the next battle. Enough boring stuff, let's talk about the artwork. So Doug and I have been uh, really defining the look and feel of this world. Um, this is Rangosh. Uh, he is a, he's a minotaur. And he uh, brings his, uh, his gang of cutthroats with him. Um, but not to be left out, Russ has also been busy sculpting a few models. He is big. 50 mil base. So one of the conceits that we have with the world is when a champion um, finds a god tier, and I pr probably should explain this a little bit. The conceit of the world is that gods have died. And when they died, their essence shattered and fell to earth in an apocalyptic rain. And these, this essence took physical form and just plunged deep into the earth um, to lie dormant for years. And it basically wiped out 95% of the population. And oh, scroll forward, 50, 100 years, and, and mortal kinds, so, you know, the mortal races start to crawl out again. And what they discover is some of them are capable of discovering these, these god tiers and absorbing their power. And when they absorb them, they become almost godlike. And now they have a hunger, and this is why they're fighting with each other. And the god tiers form the scenarios that you've got to play actually within the gameplay. And representing them, the more you find, the more scenarios you win, the more powerful you're going to get. Yeah, and girls be busy as well. This is uh, Wraith Marid. He's a dragon kin. So he comes with um, some whirlpools, which he can use for movement shenanigans. What's important is that each of the champion comes with a unit. So this is one of the axes that I'm talking about. So not only are the decisions going to be about what champion, but what, are the, what is the unit that that champion brings and how does that affect the play style of your warband? God tears affect you. <laughs> they make you bigger, they make you stronger, but you're still readily identifiable. So Rodri is uh, a dwarf, he's, uh, he's a captain of the household guard, discovered that he had a talent for, for absorbing god tears, and now him and his, uh, his dwarven gang marauded around looking for more god tears. We've got one more. So this is Shale, he's an earth magician, and he comes with a rock golem. So like I said, you start with a small warband. So the, the, the core size of the game is three champions with their associated followers. Okay, so what we're actually building in, much like it with Guild Ball, that they all bring a unique role to the battlefield. And what you're looking for is cool combos and, and set up plays between each of them. Um, each, each champion will have a number of roles that they can follow. Um, and it's up for you how you build that champion out through the course of time. So you could go down a more tanky route or a more DPS style route. Um, and you're looking to kind of build those synergies within your warband. 
Um, as I say, you're fighting over God tears. So when you're competing with, with your friends, um, you're looking to gather God tears. And there is a rubber banding system that stops that guy who plays a million games just snowballing the game out of control. Very much like an ELO system, if everyone knows what that is. Uh, but it means that the stronger do not necessarily get stronger. Um, and it means that the game stays much more, or the campaign stays balanced for much longer. But what you're looking to do is to gather God tiers. You're looking to spend them on increasing your champion powers. And you have unique build paths for each champion. Or you're looking to attract more followers. Another champion, maybe, who brings his own kind of cadre of, of warriors with him. And you're also looking to progress the campaign. As I said before, this is a narrative-driven campaign. So we're going to make this very uh, live, uh, so very seasonal. So we'll be releasing organized play to go along with this that will help push the narrative of the world along. And we're certainly going to be looking for the results of what you guys do with this to actually drive the world. We're going to focus an awful lot with the organized play on kind of um, like campaign weekends. So not necessarily hard 50-point list, blah, 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 but much more about you turning up and this is the setup. And we're going to enable tournament organizers to really sell and tell amazing stories. And you're going to be there to help shape those stories and we're going to record the results of them. So expect your champions to develop through the course of a day at a competitive event. Um, we're also looking at this from the long term as well, that we're going to have to look at cycling champions out. So during the seasons, as things come and go, some champions will wax and wane, and we're going to, able to uh, be able to keep the health of the game um, very stable by doing that. We're going to do something that I don't know if anyone's ever done before in, in, in war games. Um, we're actually going to be providing the option uh, to get involved early, an early access pack. Uh, and the way that we're going to do that is, well, actually, all of you guys get the first invite. So you get first refusal on this. SteamCon attendees get first refusal on... <laughs> so these are going to be... A sm these are going to be a limited number of early access packs that are going to be available in January. They're going to have to celebrate this and to, you know, to say thank you. These are going to be pre-Kickstarter limited release models. These aren't going to be put into full production. They are tools for you guys to get involved in the development process. We're going to have private forum areas, Slack channels. All the dev team's going to be there. All the playtesters are going to be there. And what we're going to do is create this game together. So consider this more of a toolkit. You're going to have dice that are blank faced and we'll send sticker sheets out so you can actually change the dice math. We can actually talk about this different ability. Here's a sticker, put it over the top of the old one so we can actually try and mess about with the numbers within each of the, each of the champions. We're gonna wanna talk to you about the combos that you've found and the, and the things that you've found have worked and haven't worked, the things that are confusing and are confusing. And what this means when we actually get to the point where we go to Kickstarter, where we actually start talking to the wider population of, of the gaming world, and we're trying to hook in those players who are currently dissatisfied with their war band or war level games that they're playing at the moment. You guys are gonna be our champions telling them how good it is because you've been involved in the process and helped us to actually make sure this is one of the best games that can come out. There's a few more champions I haven't told you about. So we've got to save something for the American guys. Um, so... Oh, come on. <laughs> we've got to save something for them. So, two weeks' time, we're at SteamCon US. There will be more pictures and more exciting stuff about Gautier and Gilbal. That's it, guys. Thank you ever so much. Give yourselves a round of applause.